Hey everyone, Leticia here. How's it going, my friends? Coming to you from sunny Playa del Carmen. It's been a hot day today. You can tell the glistening on my skin. And anyway, some of you will be watching this live. Some of you will be watching this after the fact. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for tuning in. I am joined today by Peter Turetsky. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Leticia. Thank you so much. Can for you hear me, me, Peter? It's an absolute pleasure. Yes, I can. Yeah, my pleasure. I can hear you great. So. So my friends, I, uh, I just got back into town. Some of you know I was visiting my beautiful homeland of Romania. I spent a day and a half in Istanbul as well. Peter is a fellow Canadian currently making Playa del Carmen home. And uh, he's actually joining us from uh, not so sunny Europe just because it's nighttime over there. And we were trying to coordinate our, our time. So thanks again, Peter, for making an effort. Um, and so, Absolutely. Peter, tell me, tell us a little bit about, you know, tell us a little bit about you and how you ended up, uh, you know, having your sights on uh, the beautiful Riviera Maya and in particular on Tulum. Well, thank you for asking that, Leticia. Um, I think the answer is very similar to many other people's uh, answers in that we've been down, myself and, and my wife and my kids, we've been down to Playa uh, do Carmen and, and Cancun and Tulum over the years, and we just fell in love. Um, you know, a first visit turned into a second visit, into a third visit, and eventually we decided to relocate and call the Riviera Maya our home. So we've been down here for about two and a half years now, um, and I am a professional engineer, as, as you may know, but some of your uh, uh, dedicated audience may not yet. No, it's important uh, I am a for people to know, yeah, tell us. Yeah, tell us. Absolutely. So I am tell a Tell us a little bit about engineer. your background. Yeah. Will do. So I'm a, I'm a professional engineer and a project management professional from Toronto, Canada. Um, it's where I was uh, pretty much raised my entire life. Um, and I have over 10 years of experience, uh, over a decade of experience in the development world, uh, both for public and private uh, industry. And, um, you know, when we, when we, just before we relocated down to Playa about two and a half years ago, um, not only did we fall in love with, uh, obviously, the, the gorgeous weather, the, the beautiful beaches and the amazing, you know, uh, restaurants and, and just the overall vibe. But what was very important for me from a professional perspective was I took note of how much infrastructure was being built and supported by all the various uh, levels of government, starting from the federal down to the local. And, uh, you know, two of those projects that, that your, your dedicated listeners will probably know um, is the Tren Maya and the Tulum Airport. And so, you know, when, when, I, when I viewed that infrastructure, um, you know, that upcoming infrastructure, that, that, that translated to me that um, there is all kinds of investment and all kinds of support from various industry players. And this just, this just goes to show how much of a boom is going on down in, in Riviera Maya. And so we thought, hey, uh, we've always wanted to develop our own piece of property in a gorgeous, uh, um, you know, uh, area and, and close to the beach. And uh, yeah, that's how we ended up uh, with our beautiful project called uh, Petit Tulu. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to 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 you know i i'm already somewhat familiar with the project i look forward to you know really getting more in depth and also telling our audience about it um and i'm gonna ask you some specifics about it and maybe we can bring up the slides but that's what i usually do um let me let me see if there's anything i missed so you know you have a professional engineering background now because this is your first development in tulum i know you also partnered with a local builder and maybe we could talk about that as well after we talk about the project so so people can know that even though you're a Canadian, you are supported by a local construction firm with experience in the area. They have a number of completed projects. Um, so it's going to be a, really a win-win scenario. Uh, at least that's, that's how Leticia, I see it. Um, absolutely. Uh, Leticia, if you don't mind, we could even we can even chat about that for a couple of minutes right now. And just, just to piggyback off of what absolutely. you mentioned. Absolutely. Let's do um, that. And, yeah. We, we, Did you we want, partnered um, with. I don't have that slide deck. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, I can mention a couple of words. Uh, we don't have to go into the specifics, uh, like into all the details. But 
Uh, what, I, what I would like to mention is that we did partner with uh, local professionals that have uh, an amazing reputation down here in Tulu. Um, and so they've built at least uh, seven projects already, successful projects, um, and they've got another three on the go as we speak. They are a local professional architect slash constructor. So they don't just bring the construction side, but they bring the professional architectural side. And that's why we had such an amazing um, relationship together, working collaboration, because uh, my professional engineering background combined with their professional architectural background uh, really clicked for us. Um, and so we, we, we're, we're super happy uh, to be supported by them. And, and just, you know, over the, over the last, you know, two, two and a half years that we've been down here, I mean, overall, all of our relationships, whether, you know, as it's been with, um, you know, suppliers, uh, you know, uh, municipal staff, um, other, you know, contacts and agents, everything has been, you know, amazing. And, and yes, it is our first project in Riviera Maya, but the principles of development do not change regardless of the the geographic location that you're located in, right? So um, we're very familiar with the development process from the Toronto and GTA area. We applied those same principles. Um, they're transferable down here. And uh, so far, we've been uh, a great success in getting to where we are today. I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear, Peter. I'm excited for you. And uh, I'm excited. Let's, let's get into the project. Tell us a little bit about it. So the uh, I'm going to bring up your slide deck just a few slides. Um, the name of the project is Katin, and you explained to me that that means new, new, beginning. new beginnings. It, new beginning in the Mayan language, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So we we wanted to okay. we wanted to reflect and 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 have a little bit of obviously you know the the amazing Mayan traditions and and. Uh, incorporate that into our name and so the exact literal translation of katin to room is uh new beginnings into room. i love it so that's why i put that on uh on my uh thumbnail so this we have my friends a render of the building now you mentioned a, a few things are going to change not the structure or anything but the the exterior color you mentioned you guys are going to go with a beige now instead of the gray is that correct that is that is correct and so mm -hmm. so just to 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 build on that um we we had a soft release for sales uh, maybe three or four months ago what i mean by soft is we were in the process of process of receiving all of our construction permits from uh from the city of, from the municipal of tulum um and so during that soft release we've received a lot of feedback from various agents, potential buyers, clients, etc. And one very important item for us as, you know, as a professional and as a developer who wants to provide extra added value to our um, clients and our, you know, uh, dedicated buyers is we, we listen and so we adapt. And so when we hear, you know, some suggestions or some, you know, constructive, constructive feedback, with respect to what people want to see, we were able to incorporate some of these changes without actually affecting, you know, as you mentioned, the structural layouts of the units um, or any of the other important areas. So as an example, in this render here, what you would see on the common area rooftop where you see that bar and grill there at the very top, um, we have mm -hmm. or previously mm -hmm. had a, a fireplace um, you know, where you can sit and sip on some wine, you know, under the stars uh, in the evening. Um, but a lot of people mentioned, hey, it would be great if we had, you know, a pool. It doesn't have to be a huge pool, but it would be great to have a plunge pool on that rooftop close to the, to the barbecue so you could, you know, host, you know, a small little gathering and use the pool and have a, a lounge area. So we said, hey, you know what? We spoke to our structural engineer down there, um, <laughs> and we spoke to our thank you, th th thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we spoke with our uh, architects, and we said, yeah, this is a this is an absolute value add that we can add without changing much. And hey, now we're gonna have a pool on top of that uh, on the rooftop. So yes, uh, to your point, okay. we're gonna go with more more lighter tones, more beige tones. Um, 
<coughs> again, yeah. just mm -hmm. piggybacking off of the great feedback that we've received. Okay, awesome. Um, I want to let's talk a little bit about the location. Tulum is a growing municipality. It's the fastest growing municipality in Mexico, mis amigos, and it's right here in the Riviera Maya. As Peter <coughs> mentioned earlier, uh, what we have two major pieces of infrastructure coming to this area. We have the Mayan train, the Tren Maya, which is a a, a huge infrastructure project. It's a uh, it's a high velocity train that will be uniting all the different cities and attracting attract touristic attractions in the Riviera Maya, in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Um, so starting from Merida, Cancun. This is very exciting. And then just south of Tulum, about 45 minutes south of Tulum, we now have uh, in the making uh, a new international airport. So it's going to be the second international airport in Quintana Roo. We expect this is going to be bring direct tourist traffic to this area, whereas now visitors to Tulum have to fly into Cancun, which is about two hours north of there. It's a major international airport, well connected to the rest of the world. They now have the choice to just visit the whole the city of Tulum. It's going to be a lot closer to them, uh, along with you know the rest of the south of Quintana Roo. Um, so that's very exciting about Tulum as the destination, and then. Is, do we have um, on your slides, do we have the location within the city of Tulum of the building, Peter? Uh, yeah, so if you if you uh, move a, a couple of slides down, um, maybe a couple more, okay. you will see. There you go. Right, okay, perfect. There you go. Uh, and I don't know if I can make this any bigger. Uh, no, that, that wasn't it. Exit full screen. Oh, it's full screen for me, but I don't need it to be full screen. All right. Cool. Uh, hopefully people can see. So we are, so my friends, Tulum is growing rapidly. Uh, up until about two years ago, we only had one beach access in Tulum, which is this Avenida Coba. About a year ago, I want to say the municipality opened Avenida Cuculcan, which is now going to be the second beach access in Tulum. Okay. And as some of you already may know, Tulum is, even though it's small, it is growing, but it is surrounded by two major reserves, green reserves. We have the Parque El Jaguar, the Jaguar Park. This is located adjacent to the famous, the world famous Tulum ruins that I'm sure many of you would have heard about. And on this side, my friends, which is kind of off the map, but to the south, we have the Reserva Sian Khan. Again, this is a very, um, it's a protected green zone full. It's a biosphere, essentially. So none of those areas are allowed to be developed. So essentially any development that's going to take place in Tulum, it's going to take place within this area that we see here and, you know, a little bit inland from here. Obviously, this, the closer you are to the water, always more of a prized, more of a desirable location. Um, so, you know, maybe I've already said a lot, but Peter, tell us a little bit. So this is the location, the future location of Katin. Tell us, you know, what made you decide to acquire land in this area as opposed to somewhere else in Tulum? Absolutely, thank you, Leticia. Well, we fell in love with a with a plot of land. Um, it's a it's a corner lot, so the development will be facing uh, two sides of an intersection, um, and that's always highly I you like know that. sought after. Um, and the location is really close, as you can see there. You see Region Eight just to the, to the below uh, region 15 region eight is a very hot area simply because it's the closest to the beach and so as you can see we're extremely close to the beach um and and in fact if you go if you visit google maps now it was recently so this is region eight maybe, for... yeah you you can see region eight just just below us there. that's region eight and um, by the way in region eight you're only allowed to develop like low density like villas like two levels you're not allowed to build you know and whereas in region 15 where where Katin is located here you are allowed to build what is it up to four stories or three stories i forget what it is uh, th yeah th three stories plus a uh, rooftop so let's say in essence uh four stories so we still you know in playa we we are now allowed to build up to six stories plus the rooftop and some buildings are going to seven stories tulum does not want to become Playa, they don't want to become Cancun. So every building in Tulum, they they have to follow these regulations. It's very boutique, very quaint. Um, they want to keep that, that look, the eco, the blending in with nature. You're basically at the level of the surrounding jungle, maybe okay, a little bit above the treetops. 
but uh, that's the look, that's the style of Tulum, that's the spirit of Tulum, and that's how Tulum is becoming this international eco-chic destination. Um, and that's where we, we have some very unique and beautiful buildings, such as this one. So, um, and you mentioned to me, Peter, I know I do more talking than you. What a, what a great host I am. I'm sorry. I, um, I, I, you I believe your, your delivery is amazing, Letitia. So please, you're making my, my job easier for me. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. So you mentioned to me. Now, anybody who's been to this area, my friends, you will know that we still have a lot of jungle around here. You know, And again, it, a lot of it has been slaughtered for development. There is there are certain density regulations that like you can't build the entire plot of land. Um, I don't know. Peter probably knows more about that than I do. Bottom line, um, right now, if you come to this area now, you're still going to see a lot of dirt roads. Avenida Kukulkan is paved. None. Of, I don't think anything in here is paved. So, however, in the future, which we're talking like the next two to five years, you can expect this is going to be completely transformed into this. It already is very much very amazing but now it's going to be a bit more infrastructure more more accessible to our international clientele you know and international and national because lots of people from Ciudad de Mexico and northern Mexico everywhere else in Mexico they love Tulum they love Playa del Carmen they love coming to the Riviera Maya as well um so this is going to be a road right and you're going to be on a corner you're on a corner lot um I forgot what do you know the name or you said there's yeah, it's, it's actually right, it's, the yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's actually right there on the slide. If, if you see there, the intersection is Avenida Zapote and Avenida Fundadores. Uh, so we're oh, right on that. Okay, so they actually and, have names. Some of them only. Yes, yes, yes. Some of them only yeah. have numbers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and okay. and uh, as you mentioned, Avenida Kukulkan is is an amazing, newly extended, uh, you know, road that key infrastructure that was missing up until about a year and a half ago and so when this road opened up providing the second beach access to the avenida coba that has always been used for many many years i mean this entire area in region 15 and, and region 8 has absolutely blown up you know in terms of people wanting to be in this area because frankly a a anybody that has been to Tulum recently will know that Avenida Pukukan is actually much more pleasurable to take right now to get to the beach in Koba because Koba is still really busy. You know, it's the the the, the traditional oh, yeah. uh, um, you know Avenida Koba. Where Pukukan yeah. is nice, it's 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 paved, yeah. um, it's fast, it's more tranquilo. It's it's an excellent road to get to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, my concern is, you know, it's still only a two lane road. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, that's my niece says that uh, he can see the slides and then uh, he, he's liking what he's seeing. I'm glad to hear that. He, awesome. We'll continue. So let's let's learn more about the actual building. Um, you know, you're going to have tell us a little bit about the amenities you're planning for this building. And then we're going to get into the unit types and uh, more of the yeah. interior design as well. Absolutely. So for us, and it was thank really you for the likes and uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's exciting. Yes, uh, for me as well. Ahead, um, so for us, it was extremely important to provide as many amenities as we, we possibly could. So again, you know, the value add for our end users, for for dedicated clients who invest with us, who who go on this journey uh, to immerse themselves into into Tulum. And so, you know, we, we looked at some of the developments that are around there. And I mean, there's all, all sizes of developments, you know, from as little as nine unit developments to as large as 300 unit developments on obviously larger plots of land. But we decided to keep our development very small, very chic, very exclusive. We only have 22 units. Uh, so we don't even have 30 or 40 or 50, you know, that's typical for this size of land. We only have 22. But where we differentiate from others is that we packed our amenities as if we're a 40 or 50 unit development so we have you know the likes of a lobby with the reception slash security you know we have a full-size gym whereas a lot of developers don't have what they call these days a jungle gym which you know for any of our dedicated listeners that that utilize gyms uh you can't really get a a, a solid workout in the jungle gym that usually jungle. 
<laughs> so, so, so we have the a mosquitoes will love you. Uh, the mosquitoes will love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, but come on. Jungle gyms. So essentially, the jungle gyms are um, outdoor gyms. Like they have the machines, but they are on a platform. They might have an area of the rooftop that's uh, outdoors. And and again, it sounds like fun in theory, unless you're there in the evening and surrounded by jungle and then you'll find out <laughs> uh, that those natural uh, repellents don't work very well <laughs> so um, having yeah, an actual so we... gym i think is awesome um clientele really likes that for sure uh, absolutely know? so ours is enclosed it'll be air conditioned you won't be disrupt you know you won't be disrupted with your sets and your reps you know getting bitten by mosquitoes as much as a jungle gym um our pool uh, our ground floor pool is quite quite large for um for, for our size development um it's about 110 square meters and you know distance wise it's, oh, wow. it's about 20 meters so it's a good size um and we have some yeah. units which is just exceptional units we our, our development it, we have a west building and an east building and the west building there are four units at the bottom that have swim ups and those is essentially are you have your terrace and then you could step off your terrace right into the pool and so our pool will look extremely expansive you know very very large pool for such a development um we have on top of the gym we have the rooftop as as we previously mentioned where we have a bar and a grill area we will have uh, a plunge pool about 15 square meters and apologize for any of our american and canadian you know friends that are in square feet uh you know we have both systems here um but mainly we use uh uh, uh meters you know metric meters. so yes um uh, and so the pool will be approximately 200 square feet uh on the rooftop and so you'll have a, an excellent area for, for your grilling, you know, for hosting a, a few beers. And then you have a plunge pool and some, you know, some some tables and some lounges to relax and and to, you know, immerse yourself in, in, in the sun uh, yeah. with a with a rooftop view. Uh, we will have some parking mm -hmm. as well. Um, Tulum, okay. typically, they, they support less parking because they want people to bike more you know, e-scooter more or, or use a scooter or use a bicycle, you name it, or just walk. So we do have some bike, uh, some parking, but it won't be dedicated. It will be on the first come, first serve. So we have, I mean, our amenities, the, the amount of amenities we have, we, we we believe we really differentiate ourselves in that the unit count is low. You, you get an exclusive boutique uh, condo feel, but yet your amenities are absolutely stacked. That's really great to hear, uh, Peter. Um, let's see what else. So, so here's some of the renders. Um, I don't have. I don't know if you have the renders. Beyond. So, so we can we can see some of the some of the renders here. Usually, I'll just bring up. So, yeah, a render of the gym, proper gym. Uh, there's gonna be a rooftop bar. Uh, now, the rooftop bar. Are you envisioning this being a staffed bar, or do you think it's gonna be? I know at the end of the day it comes down to the owners, but how do you envision that? No, we envision that as it, it won't be staffed. It, it'll basically be for, you know, um, our uh, dedicated, uh, you know, clients and buyers of, of this development. Um, and so it'll be on a first come, first serve yeah. basis, or you can reserve it in advance. Got it. And then let's get into what the unit types are. And, you know, I know if there's one piece of feedback I would have, we need to make the type uh, just the font a little bigger because I don't think it comes out very well. But tell us a little about about this. So we have the studio units. How large are these in square meters? And then we can do the conversion to square feet. So Leticia, we we can actually skip through this one because the studio is gone. We only had one studio, and it was gone like before oh. we even were able to release it. Yeah. So so we could get right into the one bedroom. So so um, speaking about sure. our unit types. Um, we, we basically decided to, so there are a lot of studios in Tulum, um, you know, originally a lot of developers were building a I lot do. of, um, studios. Um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, um, you know, the, the, we felt when we were designing our development that, that the, the Tulum market was quite saturated with studios. So what we decided to do was we said, Hey, 
let's let's do one up you know let's do an upgrade let's let's build one bedrooms because with the one bedrooms you now have the privacy of the actual bedroom but our living rooms also have um you know couches because all of our units are fully equipped and fully furnished right that that that's what comes with the price and so they're fully turnkey ready once you close once the unit is deeded in your name you can basically put it on airbnb and start cash flowing it immediately because it comes fully furnished oh, that's that really sheets, you know plates uh you name it everything ready for someone to move in so our sofa beds in our one bedrooms will be able to sleep another two people so you can maybe come as a family mm -hmm. or maybe you can come as you know two two couple friends so we we decided to to do one bedrooms um we have uh 11 units um uh, forgive me uh, we have yes 11 units that are one bedrooms and um mm -hmm. these 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 one bedrooms basically come you know full kitchen full bedroom living area um washrooms and one thing that we decided to do to, to again differentiate ourselves a little bit is that we decided to have the kitchens fully usable. W what I mean by that is you'll see a lot of developments where you have to maybe do your laundry off site. So maybe you have to do your laundry in, you know, downtown Tulum, or maybe you have to do your laundry in a shared mm -hmm. common area in the development. We decided, I, I don't know, we, yeah. we wanted everybody yeah. to be as comfortable as possible. So our kitchens actually have, you know, two in one washer dryers. We have proper size yeah. fridges they're not those you know those mini fridges they're proper size fridges uh you know we have an oven which is not thank you we have an oven which is not really a common yeah. uh place that you'll see you might see a microwave and and, and obviously your your um uh grill yeah. uh but you won't see too many comforts in the kitchen in Tulum where if you want to stay because yeah. we wanted to you know, dedicated to short term stays. But if somebody wants to stay a little bit more long term, like the digital nomads or somebody who just wants to relocate for a month or two, we yeah. wanted our units to be as comfortable as possible. Yeah. So anybody who's investing in our development, they can cater to both types of uh, users, right? Short term stays, a couple of days a week, two weeks or longer term stays. So yeah our um our units our one bedrooms like are, are very much yeah ready to to live or to rent for short term i like that and because we know that the the clientele in the area is changing i mean uh, you know what's been missing in tulum has been the infrastructure but by the time this building will be ready now we're talking by the way the delivery date we're expecting towards the end of next year correct, correct. that's what you told me correct end Absolutely. of 2024 no, so about that. a year and a half by then we expect you know more infrastructure to have come to tulum and that will allow our uh, lovely digital nomads to to spend because there are definitely people that love spending extended time in tulum by and large that those states have been concentrated in tulum central where the infrastructure has come i i do i have heard that total play who is you know a fiber optic provider they are now expanding into tulum i don't know if they or if it's a done deal already but i know it's lot that that would be their next market after Playa. Um, so with with those with that kind of infrastructure, I you know that is what uh, allows those longer stays to happen. And uh, you know I, I'm sure that Tulum is also going to become increasingly you know a digital nomad destination. And when they come, when the digital nomads come, they stay for two, two three months, six months at a time. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody saying. Um, me saying again on the website under the three bedroom plus rooftop it mentions two bedroom plus private rooftop yeah so the different types of units uh are there any units okay good question you know what <laughs> are there any units two bedroom plus rooftop or three bedroom plus rooftop um so now we're getting into the yeah. penthouse type units yes so yeah me very happy to answer question? that question uh yeah yeah i i, I caught it so so for the one bedrooms, it, just to recap the one bedrooms, we have basically in total, we have 15 one bedrooms. Four of the 15 are okay. a little bit larger one bedrooms. 11 of them are a little bit okay. small. Okay, that's that's really the differentiator. So these are the smaller one bedrooms, whereas the previous okay. uh, image that you had there were a little bit larger. But in general, they range from 
say 550 square feet to 650 square feet, um, you know, for the one bedrooms. Uh, they all come with their own terraces, so you, you 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 can enjoy a coffee on your terrace. And as I mentioned, four units out of those fifteen are going to be swimmer. And so from your terrace, when you're done your coffee, mm -hmm. you can take a plunge right directly into the pool. Um, they look phenomenal. They look gorgeous. I mean, our developer has already built uh, swim ups. We our developer, oh sorry, I don't, our contractor, um, our constructor, and our architect. They actually built a development maybe, I don't know, three minutes away from, from where we will be building this development. And they have they have some beautiful swim mm -hmm. ups um, there. So, uh, yeah, so we'll have 15 of the one bedrooms. And I need to answer your question. We have six exclusive penthouse units. Yeah. Um, four of them are basically one bedroom plus loft bedroom. So in essence, two bedrooms, but the loft bedroom is semi open. And those units have their own private rooftops where they have uh, a private uh, plunge pool, yeah. a full uh, washroom on the rooftop, a barbecue area and enough space for a full size dining table to enjoy on your own private rooftop. And then out of those six, those are four of the, the one bedroom plus uh, loft. And then we have two that, final units that, yeah. that are the largest units. Those are three bedroom units, three full washroom units. And again, on the rooftop, you have an even oh, wow. larger pool than the loft units. You have that full washroom there. You have a barbecue area and you have enough space for a full size dining. They're quite, they're quite gorgeous. Double high okay, ceilings Peter, in, um, in those house yes. Oh, nice. Uh, only in the three bedrooms or in the two bedroom? Uh, like two bedrooms the two bedrooms also. Plus all, one, the, one so plus all, all, all the units with the yeah. rooftops, private rooftops are, are double high ceilings, as you can see there. Okay, that's what, and again, um, yeah, sorry, that, that looks amazing. Um, so keep in mind, my friends, the, the color of the walls will be different than the render. It will be more of a beige color, lighter, brighter, uh, and nature, oh. nature. Yeah, Ni says, thank mm -hmm. you for the clarification. Thank you for your participation, Ni. <laughs> okay, so so I got it. Thanks for explaining that. So, so um Again, uh, Peter, in the interest of time, can we give us an idea of the prices? And I know um, I, I do have the price list somewhere, but, you know, I don't have it ready to go. So, so again, rooftop, what's happening? So this rooftop, for example, this would be one of the rooftops of one of the well, penthouse units, or is this something else? That, that, yeah, that is correct. So this is the rooftop for one of the penthouse units. This is the loft penthouse units, so the four units that we have. As you can see, you have a pool, uh, a, a, you have a barbecue area, grill area, you have a full size washroom, um, and you have a dining area. Nice. So if you have a party on the rooftop, you know, your guests can use that washroom. And again, these were the other ones that you mentioned the two bedrooms plus private rooftop. Uh, but now you. You said this one was going to be a three bedroom, no? Uh, that's going to be a three bedroom. Three and bedroom what I just, what, 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 yes. And Leticia, that's what I just funny. noticed is that we might have uploaded uh, the wrong slide in this, in this, in this presentation. So forgive me. Uh, that should say three bedrooms. Okay, so me, so no, no, it's, it's, it, it, okay. it, 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 it's, a, it's a small little error on, on probably on my part. So don't even, don't even stress it. Knee, maybe that's where the confusion yeah, was. Yeah, so that yeah. slide that's should okay. say three bedroom, uh, three washroom. Hopefully that, that clarifies it. Okay, got it. And yeah. you already spoke to us about the awesome kitchens. Okay, my friends. Well, uh, I'm going to just go back to the main screen. As soon as we have some updated renders, we can share them with, 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 uh, in, a, in a link. In the meantime, just kind of use your imagination. It will be lighter colors, but the overall design doesn't change. Tell us a little bit about pricing. Um, I know, you know, the studio, so the, the studio unit is not available. What's the starting price point for the one bedrooms? Um, if, uh, and I know so, it, there are different payment schemes. So if somebody puts a larger down payment, they can get a significant discount. Uh, yeah. Correct. So Leticia, the, the pricing uh, ranges from anywhere 
at, at the current exchange rate, uh, obviously it, it, it does jump up and down. Um, right now we're, we're looking at just without going to specifics, anywhere between 140,000 us up to about 350,000 us. So take that range. Um, Obviously, okay. the, the one bedrooms are going to be anywhere in the 140, 150, 160 thousand dollar range. Now, those are prices fully furnished, fully equipped, ready, turnkey, ready to Airbnb and cash flow. So that, I mean, when you compare that okay. with some of the GTA pricing and, and you know, uh, you know, Florida pricing or, you know, anywhere yeah. on the East Coast. But even Mexico United City, States. even Mexico City pricing. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah, I know, uh, Peter. And and what's amazing about this area, I mean, again, we have Mexicans from Mexico City and other major Mexican cities like uh, Monterrey, Guadalajara. They, they invest in the Riviera Maya too because they it's they see the value. They also understand we have an international clientele. Um, it's an international. It's a it's a it's a destination of international interest. So you're drawing from an international pool of tenants. Um, it's an area. It's a very much a growth area um and once tulum is built up there's just going to be no more room to build and and i think with with the uh upcoming infrastructure we know even from canada i remember my fellow real estate investors they were always kind of on the lookout as to where the no, the new ghost station was going where the new train station was going because they knew property values were going to go up in those areas so whoever ends up getting into the Tulum market now, you really are still very early in the game. Um, and when it comes to capital appreciation, it, it's logical that with with just how this area is booming, it's, again, we can't give them a, a guarantee in writing, but it's just logic, it's principles of investment. We know like there's a lot of money, millions and billions uh, coming to this area. The Mexican president is fully behind. Like he wants to make sure that the Tulum airport gets finished before he leaves office. Um, same thing with the Mayan train, fully behind this project, together with the Quintana Roo governor. Um, it's an exciting time for Quintana Roo. I'm uh, you and I are both here at the right time, and whoever wants to join us, adelante, um, join it's us. A, um, it's a nice little time. It's a nice little okay, time. those are my closing words. <laughs> Any closing words from you, Peter? And then I'm going to put up my contact slide. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, Leticia. So just building on what you mentioned, the last point, which is an extremely important point, is we've noticed that the rental market is is hot almost, you know, 12 months of the year. Whereas before we typically, you know, had high season, low season, mid season, it seems like now all those seasons kind of uh, mixed together. And now it almost seems like there's always, you know, demand for rentals, whether it be in Tulum and Playa, et cetera. So the rental market is really strong. And one thing that we decided as a developer, West Pier Developments, um, to do for our clients is we said, hey, let's support you guys, not just, you know, upon delivery of, you know, through the sale process and upon delivery of your unit and then through the one year maintenance as every developer is, is obligated to do we are also offering maintenance basically management property management of your unit if you choose to use our services so what we mean by that is if you purchase a unit you can you can select any company that you want and there's many great companies in Riviera Maya that will manage your rental for you you know they'll take care of everything you just you just wait for you know your your return on investment to come in but we as a developer we said hey we want to give that additional support that additional comfort and that confidence to our buyers to say we westbury developments we're not just developing you know and then we're we're maintaining and then we're going to ride off into a sunset yacht you know in our yacht which we don't have, but uh, what we're here to do is we're here for the long term. We want to build our name. We want to build our reputation. We want to build a second, a third, and a fourth project. And one of the best ways to you know help our sales for second, third projects is also to do excellent property management for those clients that choose to, to use us. Um, and so please note anybody who's watching and, and listening 
uh, we are very happy to provide property management uh, for your full rental needs. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you're not a professional at Airbnb management and you're a Canadian or American investor, you know, you don't have to worry about managing your unit yourself. Uh, Peter's company will, you know, they will have a management arm and they will help you with all of that. That's good to know. Uh, Peter, somebody again, um, needs asking about the pre-sales and down payment options. Um, I don't have the price list right now ready to go. What I was thinking is I could put it, um, it, it I could put a link to it in the description or uh, as a as a fixed comment, and that will show the the down payment options, right? Uh, unless you want to comment briefly, Peter, if you have it ready to go and uh, want to show. Yeah, uh, me. So uh, depends on how much time we have, uh, Leticia. Well, we're already we have a couple longer more. than we're already over. We're already over. <laughs> we're already over. <laughs> but we're having such yeah. a great conversation. We can't. We can't. It seems to be That's very difficult, difficult to stop. Um, and, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll summarize it like this: We have three payment structures. So we have the thirty forty thirty, which is the typical common payment structure down here in, in Riviera Maya. At that uh, payment structure, so thirty upon signing the the promissory agreement, which is the offer of purchase uh, um, and sale agreement. 40 basically throughout construction uh before you know you get the keys to your unit and then 30 upon uh closing so 30 40 30. that is your typical list price without any discounts and then the second column which is the 50 40 10 so 50 upon promissory agreement signing that's the deposit that that's the down payment 40 during construction 10 on closing that you will realize a five percent discount and then the final structure is 90-10. So if you provide a 90% uh, down payment, nothing during construction, obviously, and then 10% on closing, then you realize a 10% discount, which is quite, quite extensive. I mean, it's, a, it's an excellent bonus. So we have that those three payment structures yeah. with, with, those, with those discounts. Okay, thanks for specifying, Peter. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to put my little... Thank you for watching and muchas gracias. Uh, if you happen to be a broker watching this, uh, I do have the honor, you know, Freedom Playa is uh, working as a master broker for this project. So please reach out to me. Here's my contact info, mis amigos. And uh, so whether you are a potential client or even a fellow uh, broker here in Playa or even internationally, feel free to reach out and we can discuss uh, benefits for everyone, okay? Thanks, everyone. And thanks again, Peter. Have a great rest of the week, everyone. See you soon. See you on the next one. Bye for Thank now. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you for hosting us. Have a great My week. pleasure.